What goes on, Tube World? It's Blue Ronin, and I'm back with another video. Today's joint is about my get home bag. So nod your head for six seconds, and we'll get into this. So before I begin, let me just take a quick second to say thank you to all of the content creators who came before me. Uh, men, women from every community across this country have helped me to, uh, to grow, to uh, understand, and to learn the value of being prepared and of self-defense and self-reliance. Um, without you guys, I probably would not be doing this, and I definitely, definitely would not be in a situation to be able to uh, help others and maybe share my experiences with those who are just getting started. So salute to you guys. And so, um, like I said, this is about my get home bag. Now you may ask yourself, well, why do I need to get home bag? And my answer to you is you might not need to get home bag, but I feel for my situation and uh, my environment, my circumstances, something like this is vital for me to have uh, with me at all times. And I'll, I'll try to briefly tell you why. And so um, from the front door of my house to the parking lot of my job is exactly 27.4 miles. And, and that's roughly 35 minutes by car uh, each way. And a couple of years ago, I heard, I was hearing more and more about uh, the, the, uh, the possibility of an EMP attack or electromagnetic pulse attack uh, as opposed to a nuclear one. And why that, you know, that, I heard somewhere that somebody that there's there's a prob there's a higher probability of that happening than a nuclear attack. Now I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just what was being said. And I started thinking about that. You know what would happen if if the uh, if the American power grid went down? Um, no one's coming to help you. Okay, uh, there'll be no taxis, there'll be no buses, there'll be no Ubers, there'll be nobody's grandma coming to pick them up. Uh, no best friends, no sweethearts. None of that. Why? Because no one's going to be able to go anywhere. Everything's going to be down for the for the most part. So if I were at work and I happened and there happened to be an EMP pulse attack or maybe some type of uh, civil disturbances or civil disobedience and I was forced to walk home, that was this, that's what this bag is for. OK, so um, I got to set up for roughly roughly a two day trip. Now, why two days? Well, you know, if I most likely to not, I'm probably not going to have any problems getting home. If I leave, if, if something happened and I were in my car were uh, were immobile and I wasn't able to call someone to come pick me up and take me home and I, I was forced to walk. Um, this bag is set up for that because, you know, it, it, you never know if you're going to be able to take your most direct path home or not. You just don't know, depending on what's going on. Um, like I said, there may there may people may start acting crazy or irrational right after this happened. Um, I feel like if, I, if that were to happen and to me and I recognize what was going on, I would leave immediately and start walking home because I got people who are counting on me to get there. And so, but, but you may not be able to take your most direct path. You may have to deviate from your path depending on what's going on in the environments around you. And so uh, where I live, I live in the Carolinas and, you know, from my house to my job, there aren't... Uh, there aren't too many woods around, but if I have to deviate, if I'm forced to go into the woods to, to try to find my way home, um, I have things in this bag that will help me um, through that situation. If I had to, you know, if God forbid, if I had to sleep in the woods overnight, I, you know, I really don't want to. <laughs> the last thing I want to do is sleep in the woods, especially at my age. I have no desire to do that whatsoever. I don't want to have to walk 30 miles home, but you know, things happen and that's what, that's what prepping is being prepared for certain situations so that's what this bag is so um, I'm gonna go through this rather quickly um, there are some things in here that you may have seen on my first video if you saw my first video and I won't so I really won't go into those too much but there are also th some things in here that I feel like I may need to explain to those who are maybe just getting started and so you have an understanding of why I have what I have in my bag so first up is a pair of uh, hiking shoes okay uh, these are for Columbia um, I do not know uh, the model. Um, I've had these for a couple of years now and I have worn them in order to break them in, which I, I would highly suggest you do the same. If you get a pair of walking shoes, um, wear them around, okay? Uh, break them in really good if you can. And I keep these in my car uh, the vast majority of the year, uh, except when the weather turns really cold. Um, I have a, uh, a winter setup that I, you know, I may get into another day, 
But as of right now, these stay in my car at all times. I never take them out except during that during the cold time of year. So a good quality set. If you're going to spend money, if you're going to spend money, spend money on things that are vital. And having to walk, at least in my situation, having to walk 30 miles home, I want to be comfortable. Okay, I don't want some crappy shoes that are you know putting blisters on my feet. Wear, get, invest in a good pair of walking shoes. Okay, you know, as we all know, if you know anything about Columbia, that's a good quality brand. And uh, I have no doubt that these will be, these will make my journey home uh, much more comfortable. So inside of these, I keep um, two different pairs of socks. Uh, the first set is a uh, pair of rainproof socks. Okay, I have not worn these yet, but um, I can kind of tell that, you know, they have a, uh, an insulated inside. And you can feel that you can feel the protective barrier inside the socks. So a good pair of waterproof socks will come in handy, even though the shoes are waterproof. Uh, you can't go wrong being doubly protected because the one thing you definitely want to do on a long walk is protect your feet. Um, I've been on you know hikes and things. I haven't done it a lot in my life, but I've done it enough to know that uh, having comfortable shoes and having dry socks or dry feet is vital uh, for a long walk home. And also have a pair of just plain hiking socks. Um, of course, you know, you wouldn't want to wear both of these at the, uh, both pairs of socks at the same time. But uh, depending on the situation, whether it was raining or not, um, you know, it's always good to have an extra pair of uh, a socks on hand if possible. OK. So I'm going to go through these pouches quickly. Um, the first pouch is Firestarter. Uh, this is just a uh, I got the, most of the stuff that you see I did get on Amazon. Uh, this is just a, uh, a waterproof uh, capsule and I've got tinder in here. This is um, cotton balls that are uh, have um, Vaseline embedded in them. I've just I've probably got uh, seven or eight pieces of tinder in here. Uh, you may ask, well, why would you need this? Well, because like I said before, in the odd chance, I'll be forced into the woods. You know, say somebody saw me walking with my pack and uh, they weren't prepared and they wanted what I had. And I had to beast a, beat a hasty retreat into the woods in order to maybe regroup, regroup or uh, be able to, um, you know, um, anticipate somebody's arrival. Um, I have I have and I have to start a fire if I'm going to be there overnight. Um, it's always good to have some type of fire starter with you uh, if possible. Next is a good old fashioned Bic lighter. Um, this is one of the things that uh, when we speak of redundancies, um, having more than one thing uh, in, you know, on you or in a bag, uh, this is one of them. Uh, having fire is, is important, is vital, as a matter of fact. So if you're able to get, uh, get a good, good old fashioned li a big lighter, I would strongly suggest you do so. Next up is non-lethal deterrent. Uh, this is a uh, saber pepper spray. Um, it's always good to have a non-lethal deterrent. You know, if somebody's tripping, you know, you know, they may not be, uh, you know, be armed or be uh, aggressive enough to, you know, use a lethal option on them. You just want to kind of get away from somebody. Uh, this may be a very handy to have. Uh, we all know what pepper spray does. And I think this is uh, just good to have handy. And this is just a, uh, a little uh, battery powered flashlight. Um, one double a battery this does have a night glow cap on it um you know just something basic i don't need anything uh too extravagant like i said i'm only uh i'm less than 30 miles from the house so i don't need to go you know too expensive on certain things but you know you always want to have a good flashlight on hand like i said and this this is battery powered um i do have a uh, rechargeable option that i will show you a little bit later but um just a, a typical um standard flashlight nothing too fancy Next up is a uh, Grail uh, Ultra Press water filter. Um, as you, if you know anything about Grails, uh, these things are great. They are not cheap. Okay, they are not cheap. Uh, I haven't seen one yet under uh, under fifty bucks. So you're going to pay probably anywhere between fifty to hundred, probably more in the seventy-five to hundred dollar range. But as far as your health is, health is concerned, is, 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 when it comes to drinking water, uh, Grail can't be matched. At least not yet. Um, they filtered, not only does it filter out, um, microorganisms, but it, microorganisms, but it also filters out viruses as well. So you can, you can drink from almost any source of water, uh, with this particular, uh, uh, filter. Um, it's a press filter. There's a, there is a fill line inside on the inside. 
Uh, I'm not showing you because it's very, this thing presses down very slowly, but that's a good thing because it's pressing out all the bad stuff you don't want to take into your body. And um, there's a fill line uh, inside. You fill the water to that line inside and just and just press down and it will filter your water. It's going to take a little while, but um, it will filter your water so you'll uh, be able to drink it. And I just keep some um, some hydration uh, uh, powder in here. Um, you just never know when, you know when you're going to need it. These are uh, basically electrolyte. Um, drink mixes that got a couple different flavors in here. I think I've got four packs in here, but um, Like I said, this it's a 30 mile walk home So there's really no need for me to have extras But uh, like I said, I do live in the Carolinas and it does get hot and should I have to walk home uh, in the in the middle of summer? It's gonna be a, a very long and um, sweaty uh, Trip back to my house and so it's good to have uh, electrolyte powders or something to uh, rehydrate yourself with other something other than just plain straight up water so next we have we have a uh, camo mask you know because you know like I said depending on depending on where you are um, if you don't want your uh, your face to be seen if you want to, uh, to obscure your face this will be something good to have okay I have a, uh, a, a plain black gator pretty much for the same purposes. If you want to um, uh, cover your mouth, say for example, if there is, if you, you know, if you happen to be uh, going through an area where there's uh, civil unrest and uh, law enforcement is putting out pepper spray, uh, this might be good to at least help cover your mouth and your nose. Or if you want to obscure your identity uh, while you're going through certain areas, um, a gator is always a good, just, just a basic gator off of Amazon, something good to have. Um, you just never know when you're gonna need something like this. And next up is a simple bandana. Um, bandanas have a thousand and one uses. You just never know. Um, you know, you, you may need to you know uh, strain uh, big particulates out of water. Um, you may be able. To, you may need it to carry something. You just never know why you might. You know, or, or if it's if it's uh, hot and sweaty. If you if you're hot and sweaty, you can also use this to wipe your face. So a good bandana always comes in handy. And uh, this is just a pair of um, hard knuckled gloves. Um, you never know, you know, it's always good to have gloves gloves on you. I have a pair of gloves in every single bag I have. Um, you just never know when you're going to need something like this. You know, as I said earlier, if you, if you end up having to go out to the woods for whatever reason, you know, we hope that doesn't happen, but uh, should it, um, you have, you know, you need to gather firewood or things along that line. Um, you need something to protect your hands. Your hands are extremely important. And uh, but and these are hard knuckle, you know. And, and also, you know, in, in, in the off chance there's you know, there's some type of physical uh, altercation, um, you know, and especially if you're fighting someone bigger, um, these may help even the odds a little bit. You just you know you never know. Or if you have to break glass or something in order to uh, gain entry to a building, uh, to rest or you know, do, uh, to get to uh, to avoid um, anybody uh, messing with you. You just don't know why you need them, but gloves are always uh, handy to have. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to take this out of the bag, but it's a simple poncho, um, a rain poncho. So, you know, if it's raining, put this on, keep yourself dry, you're good to go. Um, I will get into this a little bit later. And this is just a cold pack I had. I kind of threw this in here just uh, uh, as an aside. I had I bought a, a box of these and I try to put them in my med kit, but my med kit is is, uh, is full. So I just kind of had this inside the bag. But you never know when you're going to need something like a, a cold compress. You know, if, you know, if, if you um, if you if you bang a body part on something hard and you know, try to reduce swelling or if, you know, maybe if you're already close to the house and you're hot, um, you know, uh, activate that. Um, you know, run it across your face, maybe to cool you down for the last few uh, few legs of your of your journey home. So this, I use this as a uh, basically as a utility pouch. So um, these are self-explanatory. Um, a good pair of binoculars, mini binoculars. Um, Depending on where you are, what, where you are, and what your situation is, if you need to scout ahead, it's always good to have something uh, to be able to help you out with that. Uh, these are 12 by 25 um, power uh, binoculars. They work very well. 
Um, and so, like I say, if you need to scout ahead, if you need to see, you know, what's ahead of you, if you're uh, on that long walk home, uh, something like this will come in very handy. Uh, a simple headlamp. Um, if you need to, if you need hands-free light, um, a good headlamp is always uh, helpful. Um, I have this. I'm not going to take it loose, but I have this strap with the uh, with the Ranger band. Um, I don't remember the company that makes these, but I bought a variety pack of these Ranger bands, and they are great. Um, much better than the typical rubber band. They come in all these come in all different sizes. Um, I heard that these are just basically cut up inner tubes, but they're they're wide and they're thick and they're durable. So if you get if you're able to pick up some uh, some Ranger bands, you know you could put them on just about anything that you. If something needs to be attached to something else, um, these Ranger bands come in extremely handy. So a good old fashioned headlamp, and I choose to use the ones that have the red light option because I just like you know I like to be able to uh, uh, not have things so bright, but still be able to see and hopefully not be not be seen as easily with the uh, with the red light function, but. Um, all my headlamps have a red light function. I think they uh, they might come in handy. Uh, this is um, portal wipes. I bought a, a 500 box, 500 piece box of these. Um, all you do is just add a little bit of water, and they expand. I've had this. I probably had these for probably four. This is one of the first things I bought when I started prepping. This was right around the COVID time, and and um, you know there was you know we couldn't find toilet paper anywhere, so I actually ended up getting a big giant box of these. Um, yeah, these come extremely handy. You put a little few drops of water on it, they expand. You know, um, you know, if you have to wipe, um, you know, wipe your face, wipe your backside. If you have to use one towel to do both, <laughs> I would strongly suggest you wipe your backside uh, after you wipe your face. Wipe after you wipe your face. Okay, so wipe your face first, backside last. But um, yeah, these these will come in, uh, and I have tested these. These work extremely well. They're they're, they're actually pretty durable, and so and plus they're also biodegradable. So uh, portal wipes they always come in handy. You know, if you're out in the woods somewhere, you can basically have, you know you can kind of just drop this anywhere, and uh, it's, they are biodegradable. So something to think about. Uh, just uh, my Civivi folder. This is the uh, Civivi Praxis Mini. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about this because I had this uh, on my uh, my ADC video, but great little folding knife. Um, as a utility knife. Uh, this is what I use this for. Uh, comes in very handy. So these are uh, fluorescent tacks. Okay. So I have these before uh, because, you know, like I said, if I were uh, uh, forced to go into the woods or if I chose to, you know, stay, if I wasn't able to make it home in one day and um, I, I chose, you know, to try to set up camp and, um, you know, in the woods somewhere, these will, and you tack, the, you put the, these are reflective tacks, okay? You put them up in trees. Um, and so, uh, especially at nighttime, and if you need to say, if I needed to find my way back to the main road, I would, I would put these, these tacks in trees along my way. And, you know, I probably wouldn't stay for any more. If I had to, like, hunker down for a little while, it probably wouldn't be any more than, you know, maybe an hour at most because I'm trying to get home ASAP. But this will help me find my way back to the main road. You put these in trees, you, you know, you shine your flashlight, you know, in the area, and you can basically find your way back to wherever you came from um, if you use these reflective tacks. Um, I, I saw this on another YouTube video, and I thought they were a great idea. Uh, good old fashioned compass. Uh, as I said before, uh, well, I may I may not have said before. So I basically know my way home from every direction within a thirty mile radius. Uh, I'm I'm that familiar with the area. But once again, you know, if I'm if if things don't go the way I think they would, you know, or if I had to you know, make that long walk home, then and, I, and especially if I was forced out into the woods, I would definitely this would definitely come in handy for me to kind of reorient myself to my general direction. And so that's why I keep this in here. Uh, ordinarily, if I'm on the main roads, I probably wouldn't need something like this, but you know, in the off chance, I'm kind of out in the woods somewhere and I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm disoriented. This will at least help kind of help me, uh, help point me in the back in the right direction so I can get home a lot faster. A butane lighter. Um, this is another one that I had um, in my, uh, my my EDC video. Um, I got this because it is um, better to use, at least in my opinion, in inclement weather and in, uh, in high winds and uh, rain situations. Um, I think something like this will come in very handy as opposed to a Bic, okay? Because you know you don't have to worry about the flame going out as easily. So if you uh, want to see this uh, in action, go check out my first video, EDC considerations for the beginner, and um, 
you'll see exactly how it works. Um, good old fashioned earplugs, you know, if you're able to, you know, if you're on your path home and you hear gunshots and you, you know, you don't want to, and you, you know, you may have to draw your defensive tool. Um, if you have time, throw these in and, um, you know, just, you know, so you don't, uh, you don't hurt your hearing in, in, in the off chance, uh, you may have to, um, um, you know, return fire. So we all hope that doesn't happen. We don't want that, but in the, you know, and just to, like I said, this is about being prepared. So, uh, Good having good, uh, you know, even a, a basic pair of earplugs would be better than none. And that's basically what these are. Um, I, there was a set of three, uh, three different kinds. I just kind of chose to throw these in this bag. And so uh, typical standard earplugs. A, uh, a knife opener. This is like the, the old army style knife opener. I've got a little piece of tape on this to keep the, uh, the cutting blade attached. And so um, it's got a... Um, it's got a key ring on it so you can you know, hook it to a carabiner or something, but good old fashioned um, knife opener. Um, you know, this, it doesn't hurt to have something like this. You probably won't need it. And, um, but you know, it's, it's very lightweight. So it's not, you know, it's not adding too much weight to the pack. And um, that's, that's another thing I want to talk about. Um, so the one thing you have to kind of keep in mind about, about something like this is that you don't want it to be any heavier than it absolutely has to be. Okay. If you're going to be walking a long distance, um, you don't want to, you, you really don't want a really heavy pack. Uh, as it stands now, the last time I weighed this with everything inside, it was 18.8 .8 pounds. Now, I, I can almost guarantee you that after about a mile or two with walking with this thing uh, on my shoulder, uh, it's going to weigh, it's going to weigh like 50 pounds. This thing is going to start getting heavy quick. So if you're putting a, if you're putting a, a, a go, a get home bag together for the first time, please think lightweight. Go try to go as light as you possibly can. Um, because, you know, if you're going to have to carry this for any real distance, um, then I would strongly suggest getting something that's getting, getting items that are going to be light and getting things that you, that you feel like you, that you absolutely need for your walk home in the off chance. Like I said, you're not able to go home directly. You know, you may have to alternate your path. Um, try to keep these things in mind, but also try to keep in mind that you want to keep things light as light as humanly possible. All right, so next up is, uh, is the Gerber NXT uh, suspension. Um, I spoke about this in my first video, so I won't really get into it, but just a good basic all-around multi-tool. Um, it's got all the basic stuff on it, just a great multi-tool. Um, if you don't want to spend, you know, Leatherman money on a Leatherman multi-tool, Gerber is an awesome um, a second choice as far as multi-tools go. Okay, that's, for, that's all for everything in here. So I'm going to say this for a little bit later as well. Next up is a uh, small Gorilla Tape, vacuum sealed. This is a emergency thermal tent. This is a tube tent. It's all one piece, but this but it's open ended. Um, basically, it's super simple. All you do is you uh, you tie you you run a line in in uh, in, uh, in the middle of this thing uh, between two trees. You either get some sticks or some stones or something to weigh the to weigh the size down. It basically makes like a triangular tent. Um, it is thermal. It does hold. It is enough room for two people. I have not tried this out yet, and uh, to be honest, I'm hoping I never have to. But like I said, you know, if, if I'm you know if I'm in the woods or something and I I'm forced to kind of stay overnight, then I would like to have something like this, um, you know, to uh, to keep my to, you know keep me warm, but also keep the uh, keep the elements off me as well. Got a couple of Mylar bags. Uh, why the Mylar bags? So um, if I were to have to, you know, to, to you know, to hunker down overnight, um, I could fill these up with, uh, you know, relatively soft vegetation, nothing, no sticks or anything, nothing that's going to poke holes in it. And I could basically use this as a pallet to sleep on, uh, to something to separate me from the ground. And so that is why I, I have this, you know, very lightweight. Um, I have two of them because, you know, you never know things happen. Something could happen to this one or I may need a second one to uh, to gather, uh, gather supplies or something. You just don't know. But uh, this are, these are three mil Mylar bags and, um, you know, they could come in handy. Next up is a Life Straw water filter. Um, this is a um, another redundancy to my Grail water filter. Um, this is much uh, much less uh, complicated. You just you know uh, hold this down to some water, and um, and drink through it. You put the water, put it, uh, this in in the water, put this in your mouth, and just um, just uh, pull through it like a regular straw. The only downside is 
to this is I don't think it I don't think it uh, uh, filters out viruses, but I'm no, I'm pretty sure it, uh, I know it filters out uh, microbes and other uh, um, organisms that might get you sick. So um, good old fashioned life straw. This is just a little pack of batteries that I put together for, for all my uh, things that actually need batteries. Um, got some some triple A's, a couple of double A's, and some um, some um, batteries for my uh, for my defensive tool, which we we'll get into a, uh, in a few minutes. The Smith's two step knife sharpener. I spoke about this in my first video, so I really won't get into this too much. Um, if you need to uh, if you need uh, to check that out, please do so. Um, but oh, I, you know, like I said in my first video, uh, I had this in every single bag. If I want uh, to sharpen a knife quickly, I use this great knife sharpener, super lightweight, and just really uh, helpful to have on hand when you need it. Um, reusable zip ties, re reusable zip ties. And um, like I said, I, I keep a, a small handful of these on hand, um, very lightweight as well. Um, there's a little latch on here where you don't have to actually, once you uh, actually use a zip tie, you don't have to cut it. Uh, you just uh, pull the latch down and releases. And you know, the, you can use these for a wide variety of things. They're always helpful to have. So good old fashioned reusable zip ties. So um, I have a couple of Silcock keys. Um, these are used for if you're going through an urban environment and uh, you know how you know you may see buildings that have these spigots on the back, but don't have a uh, don't have a handle on them. Um, that's what that's what these are for. Um, you just never know if you have to refill your water bottle. And uh, these little tools come in handy. Um, they have a little bit of weight on them, but it's not too bad. And I also have a uh, a handcuff key inside here as well. Why? Because well, you know, I don't have to explain that. You know, if you're in a situation where you've got handcuffs on, um, and it's not by you know. Uh, respectable people then you know you have an option you know hopefully if you have an opportunity to uh have that ha handcuff key on hand you may be able to liberate yourself who knows but um you know a handcuff key is always a good thing to have so uh this is um atwood micro cord um this is the, the woodland color <coughs> excuse me the good thing about this is that um you know they come in a wide variety of colors and I would use this for a couple different things. I would use this one to string my uh, my thermal tent up, or to set up a perimeter. If I were to be hunk if I were to hunker down somewhere, to set this up as as a perimeter wire uh, for my next item, which is uh, a bear bell. Uh, I, I attach this to the um, to the micro cord um, around my perimeter. And should anybody uh, should anything come, any kind of animal, whether they be four legged or two legged, uh, come in my area. Um, I'll know that they're there before they know that I'm there, uh, which gives you uh, a, a major advantage. So uh, a bear bell um, will hopefully come in handy. Like I said, I hope I never have to use it, but um, it's there if I need it. And also this micro cord is a 100 pound test, 100 pound test micro cord, 125 feet. So um, these things are good. I uh, just have an uh, extra USB cord. I probably, you know, may or may not ever need this, but you know, it's just kind of helpful to have. I just kind of keep this here, just you know, just because. Uh, an extra water bladder. Uh, this thing, this thing folds up nicely. Um, if you never, especially in the summertime, if you need extra water to carry with you, um, it has a, a a little loop right here where you can attach to a carabiner uh, on my bag. Um, you, know, you just never know if you're gonna need something like this. Uh, just to be able to fill water up. It does fold up. Um, as you can see, it's very lightweight. And it does not take up a lot of space in my bag. So an extra uh, extra uh, collapsible water bottle. This is the uh, the pocket survival guide. Um, this thing is great. It has all kinds of helpful information, useful useful information. Um, if you're uh, not used to being in certain situations, which I openly admit I am not, and I've looked through this several times, and there's just a ton of great information in here that could possibly save your life. Um, it comes with a couple of different uh, little magnifiers, so you can see the print. One of them has a ruler on it, um, and this also has a ruler on this as well. So. Um, pocket survival guide if you could pick one up do yourself a favor grab one grab a couple of them because they're not very expensive I have these I have this particular one in a couple different bags so if you're able to get your hands on something like this do yourself a favor and get something like this because you never know if you're going to need something like this or not 
Um, my med kit. This is basic, basic standard stuff. I put this together myself. Um, I'm not going to open this right now because there's a lot of stuff in there. Like I said, I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible, uh, but it does have all the basics. Uh, maybe I'll make a video of the stuff that I keep in my in my med bags because I have um, roughly the same stuff in every med kit that I have. So, um, but we'll get into that another day. Um, next up is um, where I keep my food. Uh, these are. I do not remember the, the brand name, but the uh, the flavor is, is these are uh, pro, uh, protein bars, uh, caloric protein bars, emergency rations. Uh, they have a six year shelf life. Um, I I took these out of the original package and re and re vacuum sealed them. Um, I put the the original expiration date that they're due to expire, and then I put the date that I uh, that I actually resealed it. Um, yeah, these things, I mean, I've, I've tasted these before. They actually do taste pretty good, um, high in calories. And I think, you know, if I was to have to walk home at, uh, for one day, maybe possibly two, um, and I keep six in my, in this little pouch on the side, uh, these things will come in extremely handy. Uh, next up is another utility bag. And so in here, I keep um, I keep a, a mosquito net. Um, if you've ever been to the Carolinas, uh, you know uh, the mosquitoes and the gnats uh, have no mercy. <laughs> okay, they have no mercy. They are relentless. And so, you know, if I had to uh, to make that long walk home, uh, this would definitely make my my walk much uh, much more comfortable, not having to deal with those little rascals uh, buzzing in my ears and biting me the whole way. So, little fashion mosquito net. Pair of swim goggles you may say well why in god's name would you need a pair of swim goggles uh well in the off chance that as i said earlier you know you happen to be um anywhere near some type of civil unrest that people are, are just bugging out and scared and irrational and you know please have to use some type of tear gas to subdue people um these are air and water tight okay you don't have to worry about your vision if you are if you're able to get these on in time um, these will, uh, you can press all the air out of here. No, no gas getting in, no, no liquids getting in. Uh, God forbid, you know, people throwing all kinds of things at you. You just never know what you're going to encounter. And so a good old fashioned pair of swimming goggles, I think would do the job, at least for me. Not sure if anybody else would think so, but, uh, I think these might really come in handy. Uh, a thermal poncho. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is not like a regular rain poncho. This does trap heat very well. I have. Uh, I bought a uh, pack of five of these. I took uh, took these out the pack, put one on, see how it worked. It works great. Um, but yeah, an emergency poncho, uh, especially in the cold weather, uh, could really help you out uh, on your journey home. And this is just the, uh, a variety of, of different things. I've got a, um, an, N an N95 mask in here, some uh, some nitrile gloves, and uh, an additional uh, Mylar emergency blanket, and some bug some bug. And mosquito uh, repellent towelettes. Um, like I said, if you know, if, if, if the weather's warm, I would definitely want to wipe these, you know, on my arm. W w you know, wipe a couple of these on my arms and my neck, and um, you know, to protect myself from mosquitoes because it's um, it's not going to be a fun a fun walk home if you're having to deal with these little rascals um, the whole way. So um, these might come in handy. And I also keep a um, right in the rain book and pen. Um, also have a couple of extra um, extra magnifier in here and some uh, those life strong instructions. I don't know why I have those in there, but they are. Um, you know, right in the rain, you just you know these all these always come can always come in handy. Or you could always use those tacks I showed earlier to tack up a note for someone. Um, these actually do work. You can you can uh, write uh, on this paper while it's wet. That's what it's made for. And so um, something like this uh, could be very could be very beneficial to you should you need it. And uh, so in my in my CCW um, pocket, I keep the, um, the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus, okay, 13 plus one, um, Hollow Sun HE507K green dot uh, optic on it, has been cleared, safe direction. Um, this is a handy, really handy little uh, 
little nine millimeter from Smith and Wesson. Uh, very comp. Also have the uh, Streamlight TL TLR six on uh, light on it here as well. Um, yeah, just just a very compact, very very narrow um, self defense tool. So I thought this would per this would be perfect for this bag. Um, I you know should something happen, I actually have to walk. I, I keep this inside as well. Uh, so this these will actually go uh, go go on my waist. I would not carry these in the bag with me if I had to walk home. And I would also carry this on my waist. This is the uh, the F and Grow um, EF 107 D2 steel uh, eight inch straight blade full tang knife. Um, I would not, you know, this for me in my mind, this this would be more of a defensive uh, weapon. I would not use this for unless I had to. I would not use this for uh, for utility work. You know. Uh, cutting wood and stuff like that. This is strictly for you know getting people off of me um, should I need it. So um, this would this would I would this, I also have a uh, a belt loop carry holster for this as well. So that's what this would be for. What I'm running in the uh, Smith and Wesson is the Spear uh, Plus P uh, nine millimeter hollow point. Um, like I said, this this holds thirteen plus one, and um, I'll keep a couple of spare um, magazines that I would uh, either put in my pocket or put on my waist as well. Up should I need to? So um, spear is always a top quality defensive round. Uh, should you need it, and also um, just a, a, a nondescript hat. You know, if, like I said, if you if you want to try to keep the sun off of you, if you want to try to you know if you're making your way through a, through an urban area and you want to you know you, you want to try to be as incognito as you can, a good old fashioned hat is always good to have. So in this, I have um, I have this is uh, my EMP kit. This is uh, this is a Faraday bag, okay, and it blocks out uh, uh, electrical uh, signals. Uh, this particular one has been tried, it has been tested, and this does work. So what I keep in here is a um, a solar bat solar battery, a solar watch. This is a um, Casio Tough Solar solar watch. And in the hard case, I keep uh, a rechargeable flashlight, and this is a little mini radio. Um, very small, very compact. Uh, the only way that this works, that you're able to get signals, is if, is if you put the headphones in. Put the headphones in. That's how you get all you, know, you get all local channels. If anything would be up and running, um, you know, in, a, in, in an EMP uh, attack. But if it wasn't that, if you still had, but if, if you still had to walk your way home for other other various reasons. Uh, this might come in handy for you uh, if you know if your phone's not working for whatever reason. So um, those are always uh, good to have and good to be good to keep protected um, in case of an e, uh, EMP attack. And so, lastly, uh, what I have is a cover. Now, I hear a lot of people talking about, well, yeah, you know, it's not good to have uh, Molly bags. You know, walking around Molly bags because people may assume that you, you know, you're tactical. You have this and you have that. And, you know, there is some truth to that. You know, if people who aren't prepared see somebody who is prepared, they may try to take what you have. But I think a low budget um, option for that is to just to get yourself a good old fashioned backpack cover. Um, these are just they just go over your backpack. Um, they don't have any straps to uh, to lock them on, at least not at this size. This is um, I believe this is a 12 liter uh, backpack cover. And I just throw this over my bag. It fits perfectly. Uh, no one can tell what kind of bag I have, so uh, this is always an option for you if you if you if you have if you already got Molly bags and you're worried about um, somebody knowing you have Molly bags, um, a backpack cover could possibly be an option for you. And uh, and so that's it. Um, I know I went through, went through this rather quickly. I wanted to try to keep this short. I know people got things to do, but um, thank you guys for tuning in. You know I really appreciate you stopping by. Um, if you like what you see, if you like anything you see, um, you know. Uh, let me know. Uh, like I, said, I don't have any links to all this stuff yet. Like I said, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. This is just stuff that I've picked up along the way. And uh, but I thank you all for watching. OK, so hopefully, you know, you, you see something that you like. So as I, you know, like I try to say, you know, uh, you know, be prepared. OK, be prepared. Be a, be a really crappy victim to somebody uh, who, you know, who's trying to victimize you. Just be a horrible victim if you can be prepared. Go get some training. And uh, if you're just starting out with this with this prepper life, uh, it's never too late to start. You don't have to spend the most spend all your money on the most expensive stuff. Just get you know if you're going to spend 
you know, high dollars, spend it on, on, on the more important things. There are some things you can get away with that don't have to be top shelf. They can be good quality, not be super expensive. So um, do yourself a favor, um, you know, uh, start, start prepping because you know, you never know when you're going to need it. It's better, better sooner than rather than later. And, um, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Peace.